What would a real time traveler be like? We've all seen or read tales about time travel, but if time travel existed, how would a creature that used this develop? Would it develop? Would evolution just stop for that thing? Well, probably, but there's other considerations too to take into effect. You see, once you have time travel, you've had it forever. You've never been a time without it because you can go to any period of time. In addition, once you have time travel, you as an individual, there doesn't need to be any other members of your entire species or in the galaxy. There is just you because you're all you need. Here's why. We're going to talk about a feature of time travel called fuguing. It's something that leads to paradoxes, but if it didn't destroy the universe, which we're assuming it won't for our purposes, it would work like this. Let's say that you are the time traveler and you need the help of a thousand people to do some task. All right. So you say, well, I'll go back in time uh, one day to where I, to when I needed that help. So you go back in time. Now there's two of you a day ago. Those two sit around for a day, maybe working or doing something. And then once they reach a day tomorrow, they go back in time again. Now there's four people yesterday and they go back out the future and they can go back. Now there's eight people. And then you see, you keep doubling every time if you want, or one person can go back an hour a million times in a row. And in no time at all, literally no time at all, you have as many copies of yourself as you want. You can have an army of billions, trillions, quadrillions of yourself. You don't need to have anyone else. And you never need to fear to be killed because you can always make more copies. Yeah, sure, one of your bodies might age or go away, but you can always make more of him. Just go back in time, get duplicates. It already happened. They're back there. They're available for you to use. You can't be destroyed because you've already made a duplicate back in time. What other implications does this have? If it's just you, if you're, if this alien that I'm positing in this case is able to duplicate itself through going in time, what else, what other implications are there? Well, first, there's probably only him because everything else has been destroyed through paradoxes. There's only that one guy living in his life of a billion paradoxes. Second, it has no need for any form of communication. It doesn't have to tell each other what to do because they're him. They went back in time to do the same plan he was thinking of. Everyone knows what they have to do. Now, it's possible that one of him traveling out somewhere might find some threat or some problem to face. He doesn't need to tell the rest of him about it. He just copies himself. All, and all the ones that came from that current version of him, they know about the problem. What about the other ones? What if the threat is so is dire, like a supernova or an invasion or some terrible catastrophe? Won't he be killed? Sure, who cares? Plenty more where they came from. Just keep making more of the new ones. You can leave those guys behind to die on the vine because there's more and it's all you. Such an entity would be merciless. From its point of view, everything is already in existence somewhere. It doesn't care if it kills something else or even if it dies. Let's say it needs a billion of itself to do something. It makes a billion. That billion guys that it made can be allowed to die once they're done with their task. You don't need another billion or if you do, you can get them somewhere else. They don't even need to eat. They can just all starve to death. Who cares? Because as long as you have one well-fed one, that can make another billion. They'll all start off well-fed using time travel, and then they can all starve. As long as any of them can eat, you're covered. For that matter, what would they eat? Well, one possibility is themselves. Let some of the other ones die, dissolve them into a nutrient fluid, absorb them, and you've got your food. You don't need to get any outside source for energy thanks to the time travel paradoxes. And you know that if you're eating your own corpse, it's got all the vitamins and minerals you need because it's your own species. They could be auto cannibals. In the end, there can be only one. I keep saying they about this alien, but I shouldn't. There's really just one. There's no need for any others. There's just the one thing that duplicates and reproduces and keeps moving and traveling through time. Now, 
as I tend to do, I've actually come up with the design for this creature. This is what it looks like. You'll notice that it doesn't have any need for organs of communication because it's all itself. It, uh, the, the, the prongs or uh, protrusions on it could be used for a variety of things. One thing I'm positing is it might use these to absorb the food. It doesn't need to chew the food or distribute it. It just like it, it could just absorb it from just dissolve other members of its species or whatever it wants to eat in a nutrient broth, soak in it, soak it up, go on. It doesn't care about leaving a mess or pollution or decay or any kind of uh, a toxic waste because it just makes more of itself or it goes somewhere else. You know, if it, two days ago there was no toxic waste here. Who cares if there gonna be toxic waste in the future? You can always find the time when things are pristine as it goes around polluting and destroying things however it pleases, and plundering because it doesn't care because nothing is permanent for it. The large sphere at one end of this creature, which I have named the Skith, is its time travel device. I don't know if it's biological or mechanically implanted. It may not care anymore. It probably doesn't know how to make it anymore because it doesn't need to. It, just, it can get as many of them at once by duplicating itself. And presto, it's got all the time traveling power it needs at its disposal. Though I've named it the Skith, of course, it wouldn't have a name for itself. It would just exist. I've also developed a starship for this creature to use. I call it the Marauder. And what I've done in this art, you can see that it seems to be dissolving in from an alternate reality like it's forming through time. It could travel in time. It would probably travel in space too, because that's useful. Remember that when you travel in time, you also have to travel in space because every planet, every sun, every system is constantly moving. So if I was to go back a day in time and I stayed exactly in the same place in the universe, which I guess I can't do to relativity, but if I could, the Earth wouldn't be here anymore. It would have moved thousands of miles away because the Earth is constantly whirling through space. Plus the galaxy is moving, so I'd be off in some other place. The only science fiction time travel story I've ever read that dealt with this was one by Clark Ashton Smith where some humans make a time machine and suddenly the world whirls away and they are off in the middle of space. So they have to wait vigintillions of years until a new planet happens to come along close enough they can land on it. It's pretty funny actually. These aliens, the Skith or whatever we want to call them, I like Skith, they would be, I think they would be bandits or marauders from other people's point of view, other individuals, because they don't care about anyone else's possession. Let's say, for example, that the Skith decided that they needed Great Britain's crown jewels, okay? They make a bunch of copies of themselves. They go to, they go to England, to the, I guess it's in the Tower of London, I don't know. They break in and they, they get the crown jewels, okay? Now, from their point of view, Britain still has the crown jewels because they can go back to what before they stole it and it's still there. Well, let's see, we need more crown jewels because every skiff wants to have a copy of the jewels. So you just go back in time a whole, you know, a few million times, all the skiffs have the crown jewels. From their point of view, nothing was ever stolen because we had it once. That means from their point of view, we always have it. Of course, from our point of view, after 2018 or whatever the skiff attack us, we don't have the crown jewels anymore. They've been destroyed, but the skiff don't see it that way. They still have it as they keep going on and expanding and plundering and probably destroying because nothing nothing matters anymore. Everything is timeless. Everything always exists. They don't care about extinction or uh, destruction. They would just keep on going and relentlessly destroy everything. So it's probably a good thing that if these things exist, they haven't come to Earth yet. As with some other aliens I've spent time thinking about, I've actually put the skith into a game of mine that you can check out coming up called Hyperspace. You can check this link here to see what we do, and then you can be the skith and see how you like it.